Okay, so now we're looking at this very unusual painting by McGuill Zymanez, done around 1490. And when I posted this in my group, I had quite a mixed reaction with some people saying that they didn't really like it, it looked weird, and of course we've got the demons and tormented souls down the bottom, so nobody likes demons. And also what looks to be a giant vagina. And this is because what we are seeing here is the birthing of God consciousness and everything in this universe is birthed through the female principle. So this happens not only on the physical level, but also on the conscious level and the ethereal level. And we see this female creation uh, aspect even in Nut from ancient Egypt and she is the goddess that oversees everything and so this is the female aspect of creation being shown here now the paintings called God the Father and the Saints crushing demons now we also see a representation of the male and female twin souls we see the male on the left as the male should be and he is wearing uh, pants and he carries a bow and arrow and then on the right side we see the female and she is carrying a spear and she's wearing the dress and of course she's on the right hand side exactly where the female should be now even though she's wearing red we can still clearly see that she's shown like a female and I noticed that in some of these paintings when they do have the female wearing red it normally is when she can clearly be seen the female but when they are trying to hide the female a lot more, they tend to use blue and they place this on a male that is near a female character if she is not wearing blue herself. So we're having uh, both the male and female souls represented here and the birth of God consciousness. And we can also see the number eight represented here in the eight angels that are surrounding God. And so we have now the infinite God energy shown to us in the number within the painting. And this is from Orion. So when I speak of God consciousness, I'm talking about our God consciousness for our manifested realm. And that is Orion. And the light of Orion, when it returns, which is what it is doing now, is transmuted through our sun. And, you know, when I am talking about this information, I'm not just speculating on it. If you are only just joining me and finding my videos, I suggest you look through my previous uploads and find all the information on the space weather and cosmic weather research that I've basically been doing for the last two and a bit years. And during that time, I have seen that we have an increase in cosmic weather and it We've actually had increased cosmic rays since 2001. We had the Venus transit in 2004 and we had one also last year and this is very significant in all of this and this is also represented in the mythology. And we also see that the sun is behaving in very unusual ways that they cannot understand. We are supposed to be in a solar maximum and it is still really not behaving like any solar maximum they've ever seen. And this is because we are seeing these changes, these cosmic changes being transmuted through our sun. This is why we're seeing an increase in earthquakes and volcanic activity and severe weather and droughts and the seasons have completely changed and it's all to do with the cosmic events. Unfortunately, there has been a agenda of disinformation where there have been it's, it's been a real push to try and blame all of these unusual happenings on man-made technology and that is what they want you to believe once again bringing it into the physical bringing it into them in control and it's not them at all if anything they're just trying to mitigate this cosmic weather and we're also about to experience a galactic shockwave from this G2 cloud that's about to intersect with the center of our galaxy at Tum 
and this is actually verified on a scientific paper and I will post the link underneath this video for you to have a look at. So that is due to occur around June, July. So we definitely have a lot of changes taking place. And this is all falling into place with what I'm finding now within the religious scripture and also within the mythology of ancient Egypt and other cultures. So it is all fitting together. And so when I say the return of Orion, I'm not just speculating and saying, oh, one day Orion might return. I'm telling you that this information is coming out for you now for a reason. And we should be paying attention to this because this is really what the reality is and it's not the illusion that's being played out at the moment. What you basically need to do is start treating what you think is reality as the illusion, as the program you've been hooked into for far too long and now it's ready for you to start running on your own program again and detach from the mainframe and start bringing it back to yourself, your ethereal self. And this is exactly what this painting is showing. But it's showing the divine souls in their ethereal self once they've been Christed. And we know they've been Christed and they've passed judgment because they're wearing halos. And so as I mentioned, we do see the eight represented in the angels around Osiris. And we see the female angel on the right, uh, or the female saint rather, uh, who is the female divine twin soul and then we see the male also with a halo and he is the divine male soul. Now what happens is everything follows the Fibonacci sequence so even when souls are birthed down with the divine wisdom within them and divine knowledge well as the male has the divine knowledge within him but the female has the divine uh, ability to understand that knowledge because they are of each other they are of the same soul. This also happens in the Fibonacci sequence, in the remembrance of the divinity within these souls. So there are other souls that follow through from the first original souls that also are very close to the divine and remember their divinity. And they are also illuminated after judgment. And we see these souls represented also in the painting. And we see on this side, we've got the representation of the number six, and this is because it's clearly showing the physical in which they have defeated. And we can see the physical is also represented here because we have the demons and the tormented actually within the earth. The artist has clearly shown that this is within earth. So we're seeing these souls and we see all these heads in the background. These are the souls that are basically going back to Atum because they have not passed judgment. And on this side here we see that the eight is represented. And so now we have the eight represented twice. But if we have a look at what God is holding in his hand, we see a cross, but it's a double cross. And so now we have eight represented again. So we have the triple eight represented within this painting. And we know that that is each eight is symbolizing the immortal twin souls and the other eight symbolizes the infinite God energy which grants them immortality. And of course, if we include God, so if we count these eight angels and then we include God in the middle, then we get nine. And nine is the divine number. Think of nine as almost a fractal of the Trinity within itself. It's also like a representation of the macro and the micro which is what everything is about and so we need to also look at this painting as a representation of the physical because remember we are manifested on two realms on mother earth we have the hard physical and the ethereal and when this vibrational shift happens we see a merging of these two worlds and this is what is also represented this is when the illuminated come forward to be the victors of the first time, the coming time, Zeptepi. We see this play out on every level. We have to expect that that is how it works. And when you look at Hermetics, you understand that it does work this way. And we can also see this in Hermetics with the principle of vibration. And if we imagine that reality is exactly made up of the same particles that we see on those cymatics, boards where they put frequency 
through the sand, through the particles, and we see it changing shape. Well, this is exactly what happens to our reality because as science now knows, we are just all particles in waveform. And so this waveform can change at any time. And this is what we're experiencing now with all this new energy coming through. We're all feeling this increased energy, and especially if you are more connected into the environment and you are paying attention. Because normally what happens is when you start paying attention, you start to feel this in a physical way. You start to actually experience this. And this is why it's important to start understanding who we really are. Because until we do start understanding that in truth, we will not experience it and we will stay down here with the tormented who think that the reality that we're currently in is the truth. And so they're going to live that to the very, very end. And it's not going to be a good end for a lot of them, as you can see. So for those of us who want to avoid that, we need to understand that we aren't really attached to the environment we currently think we exist in and that is what I'm talking about um, the matrix this artificial environment of your job your career your family your um, friends anything that conditions you into thinking uh, you know who you are is that person then you need to start moving beyond that and I'm not saying moving beyond friends and family but moving beyond the identity that you see yourself as to other people. You have to start seeing things as they truly are and seeing um, yourself in a different way, in, in a way that you can represent who you truly are, not this face, this illusion that you put up to everybody else. And, you know, this takes courage. So it's not an easy process. But it is a process that we all have to start going through because this is happening whether we want to ignore it and bury down in more of this distraction or not. Regardless, this is just going to keep getting stronger and it's not going to be stopped. This change is coming. And so we either prepare for it and we benefit and experience it in a positive way or we continue to ignore what's going on and we basically get dragged over the rocks. And it's exactly like what the Hopi say when they say, let go of the shore and go with the river. Because when you're hanging onto the shore and you don't want to let go, you don't want to trust the flow of the river, the flow of the universe and where that's taking you, then you're creating resistance. So now's the time to let go. And as I said, for anybody that hasn't followed my videos for a long time, if you're only just finding my information now, please go back and look at my previous uploads to, so you can see how long I've been on YouTube and what I've been researching and why I know that this information is fitting into everything else. All of this information that I have sourced previously to finding this new information from ancient Egypt and other cultures too, is all fitting together for a reason and it's all surfacing now because it's letting us know who we really are and what is really going on around us and you will not find that on your Facebook feed. You will not find that on the lamestream news. You will not find that being discussed. But if you're finding these videos, you're finding them for a reason. So I will continue to keep putting these videos out. Okay, well, I will leave it there, guys, and um, I'll post this in the uh, Facebook group, uh, this photo, so you can have a look at this in more detail yourself, see if you can pick out any more symbolism, and I'll leave it there, and as always, peace out.